The hard problem of consciousness is something that I argue with chemists and physicists pretty often. The idea is that there's something that we don't understand about a single neuron and a conglomerate of neurons becoming a subjective experience in a living organism. Now, I don't actually believe that it is a hard problem. To me, it makes perfect sense. We observe on our planet with neurons and biological organisms that once you have a certain critical mass of neurons, you start to have brain waves. We've seen those with our little tiny human brain friends. Yes, the tiny brains we grow from stem cells. I would argue that all life has sentience, just the capacity to have an experience. So if you have sensory input, you're sentient. The argument from a more reductionist perspective is that we are just programs. We're doing what our bodies are designed to do. Whether or not you believe in quantum physics or whether or not you think time has physical properties, it doesn't really matter if there is randomness. We are just programs. This is something that I disagree with. It's also an idea that I think has caused a reasonable amount of harm in the scientific community. The concept of pain, for example, the ability to feel pain involves not reacting to negative stimuli, but having components of your brain that are capable of receiving pain. Yeah, guess what? Shellfish experience pain. But our jellyfish friends, too, react to negative stimuli. Despite not having a brain, they can learn and remember things. We shouldn't have needed to observe octopi closing their own wounds to understand that, yes, they understand that they're injured. But really, I think that the reductionist view of life isn't pragmatic, and it ignores the real differences there are between, say, a plant and a mouse. The capacity to have connections, the capacity to care for one's offspring, I think is more meaningful than just being a program. Turns out it's okay to be both reductionist and understand the value of life.